how many, like, how much time do you think somebody should spend if they're going to go, like, they have their first house and they're thinking about doing real estate investments, how much time do you think that that involves to, between start and finish to get enough experience to be comfortable working on their own? As what? As an investor? Right. Well, it depends on what kind of investor you want to be. Um, you know, it, it doesn't take a whole lot of experience to buy a property and live there for a year or two and then turn around and, and, and then rent it out and buy another property. Um, and, and as you're buying another property, you know, each one of them can be, if you're willing to, to move into them, they become, they're basically uh, become uh, owner-occupied financing. And so that doesn't take a lot of time. As far as being a full-time investor, where um, uh, you're maybe buying foreclosures or REOs, that's a different story. You really have to you have to know your macro markets. You have to know your micro markets. You have to know, and that requires those team of experts uh, in each area. Uh, you need to know your financing. You need to know the uh, consequences of uh, of of going in and going out, the costs of going in and going out of a sale, if you're going to try doing fix and flip. Uh, you need to know your margins. You need to know your tax consequences, whether you should buy and sell within a year or whether you should, um, uh, which would be a ordinary income gain or a, or a short-term capital gain as opposed to waiting over a year and becoming a long-term capital gain if, you, if you're trying to so There's so many things that you would really need, you really need to educate and um, you know, and, and be aware of if you're going to become a full-time investor. What I find that the that the best people that, that to invest are people who do not have who have a good job, but is not that the job is not related to the real estate field, because we're subject to the, in real estate. I'm subject to the booms and buzz cycles uh, of the market, <laughs> as opposed to say like Adele or a IBM engineer here in Austin who's the one that should be buying, they should be the ones purchasing at the depressed levels. Um, and even better yet, have the wife become, or the spouse, and the husband, you know, the husband could be a, the uh, spouse, could become what we call a real estate professional. And they could actually shelter the other spouse's uh, uh, salaried income, but the depreciation that is uh, on these on these properties. So, um, yeah, I would, I'd say the government requires for you to be designated as a real estate professional, requires you to have 750 hours a year. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to have a real estate license, it just means you have to put in 750 hours a year, which is about 14 hours a week, 14 and a half hours a week um, in real estate related activities that they, that they designate in the, in the tax code. And also that, uh, that at least 50% of your activities are uh, your in income generating activities are in these real estate related activities, and so it's a. I think it, I think that that 14 or 15 hours a week is probably a good a uh, good number for somebody um, to to study, to learn, to get their roll up their sleeves, to get out look at property, to get to know the markets, the micro markets, the macro markets, to build a team, to do all that. That's probably I would say a good number, a minimum. Um, and, and that's really great to know because a, a lot of the people who are listening in on this series uh, are realtors, but they're also first-time uh, investors that will be uh, looking at, you know, what is it today that works and what is it that they need to be aware of. So that's a, a big part of what this series is for. 